Hi, hi, Shepherd's Pie. Greetings from the Philippines. We're back in a rum bar again, like we always are, on another lovely day. But uh, we've got a new face today, a new friend of mine. Met the guy last night. Great bloke, Tony. He's uh, visiting Sikiel. But he's been kind enough to have a uh, little sit down uh, with us and uh, tell us a bit about his life. So, um, thanks for doing this, Tony. No uh, problem. Where are you from, mate? Uh, Australia, uh, Melbourne mainly, most of my life, but uh, got out of Melbourne 2018, retired, and uh, live up in the country now where it's cold. So, so what we're we doing is we, we, this, this interview is going to be dead quick if we go this fast. <laughs> so, oh, so, that's so. the over, over, right. So, so we'll, we'll track back, so you were, okay. born, you, you were born in Melbourne. Yep. Big family? Yes, 1959, I've got four sisters, two older and two younger, which is interesting. Yeah. But um, I get on well with a couple of them, and the others are uh, a problem sometimes. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> the older sister, you know, the bar opens too early, oh, right. so she can cause some dramas in the family, I can tell you. But mum's still kicking around and still Your mum's still kicking around? That's good. Yeah, she's still playing golf. And How old is she then? She's 90 this month. 90 and she's still playing golf? Yeah, she's That's got amazing. a golf cart and out she goes. She's, she lives in Mansfield where I live as well. And uh, she's still playing. She loves it. What's her handicap? Oh, I can't tell you. Okay. It's over. It's over 36. Oh, well, so, you're entitled to be at that age, mate. Yeah, you're entitled yeah. to be. I think it's only bit. just, though. I think it's not like 37. Oh, yeah. She's, uh, but she's struggling with it. You know, that's always a problem. I'm struggling with mine, too, I can tell you. Hard game, dog. Well, trust me, you're both a lot better than I am. <laughs> um, so, uh, what were you doing for a living? And what was your career in, uh, in Oz? Oh, I started off as a chippy or a carpenter and then uh, made my way sort of through that and then slowly became a builder, which, um, you know, but more or less my whole life, up until when I got out of it all. With the, the stress and the drama of it, I was just able to go and it was good. So, yeah, I, you know, a lot of uh, renovation type work, new houses, Commercial stuff as well, and that was something you enjoyed doing, or I mean, was yeah, it a labour of love? Or I like the, the work side of it, but um, it's the stress of you know getting the bills paid and the you know making sure the clients happy and you know them paying, which is always an issue. And overall, I did really well. You know, that, you know, I had a lot of clients that were you know from the other client, from another client, from a, and you know work just kept happy, which was good. Yeah, nice, nice. And this was all in Melbourne, was it, when you were doing this? All in Melbourne, occasionally, you know, somewhere else. But What's Melbourne like as a city? I've never been to Australia. Well, Melbourne's probably, um, I'd have to, you know, I'm out in the suburbs a bit, so, you know, I wasn't always in, in Melbourne itself. But uh, when I did, you know, it's an amazing city. It's, you know, it's got all the restaurants. You know, a great atmosphere. It's got the MCG. It's got sport. It's you know everything I really enjoyed going to the Mighty D's, <laughs> <laughs> which is my team, Melbourne Football. Is that um, is that Australian football? Is it Australian soccer? Australian football, yeah. and you won't believe this, but it's the oldest football club in the world. Is it really older than any soccer team? Or, or, your sort of football, any American football, any other football. So what year is that date back to then? Oh, eighteen fifty something. I don't oh, remember right. the exact date. Alright, oh, yeah. But that's um, when football first started. Australian rules football, which is uh, you know very much it's a huge game in Australia. But how did course. you play back in those days with the chains on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fascinating. I had no idea that Australian uh, football was that old. Because I think the oldest well, English football team is 1876 or something, so if you're 1850, you're ahead of yeah, that. Yeah. Well, that's when they started, and Melbourne was the first team to sort of, and some have died, you know, they've gone by the wayside. But, you know, I don't, I'm only told this, that yeah. um, the, we're the oldest side football club in the world, so. Right, yeah, no, well, that sounds like it happened in that period, <laughs> I've got no reason to doubt that. So, um, if Melbourne is such a nice place, how comes you moved away from it? Well, 
like any big city, I, I, don't, I don't really want to live in big cities. I'm sort of, uh, if I don't have to be there, all right, I've got a lot of friends there and I can always go back and say hello and do all that, but now I'm 200 kilometres um, near Mount Buller, right. which is a ski resort in Victoria. you got ski resorts in Australia? Yeah. I didn't know you had snow over there. Yeah, well, when it comes, it can be all right, but we well, can have some bad years as well. Because the mountains aren't even, you know, they're 2,000 metres high. Right. And that's not high. Right. Not like, you know, the big ones. So, yeah, we get snow, but it's, it's you don't rate it with other places in the world, but it's amazing how many people go. It's yeah, well, it's incredible. a long way to go to York, the snow, isn't it? So, I mean, I suppose if you've got it there and you're just skiing, you're going to go in Oz if you can uh, get yeah, the but, snow. Well, it's that expensive, though. You can fly to New Zealand, and they've got some real mountains, and spend a week there, and it's just as as dear as it is to, to go to Mount Buller for a week. Right. right. So it's not, you know, I used to go there occasionally, but um, Falls Creek's another mountain. There's a lot of Hotham, um, there Victorian uh, mountain. Right. So were you yeah. working when you moved to this? Did you impact the working in when you moved there, or were you still doing the building game? No, when I went to Mansfield, I that was it. I right. got out of Melbourne, 2018. That was, um, I'd done enough work, didn't need to work anymore. So what about your family then? Were you married at, yeah, during this time? Yeah, yeah, I was married for 20 years. Right. But, uh, any kids? That was 24 years ago. Oh, a long now. time ago, right? Yeah. But uh, what about kids? You got any kids? Yeah, I've got a couple of kids, four grandchildren. Oh, wow. So they're, they're at home. I've got my daughter living at home with her two kids and her partner. So they're looking after the place. So I don't have any bills from back there. They. They're, they're covering all those. That's nice. Which is handy. Yeah. And um, oh, there's not many bills to pay anyway. Yeah. But, um, we've got a bit of land there. I've got a few cows in the paddock. One in the freezer. <laughs> 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 which is which is good meat too, I can tell you. Not yeah. like you can get here. Sounds nice. Sounds <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, the beef's not the best over here. I must admit. Um, well, when they import it it's from Australia, or geez, I had some from. Brazil or something recently. Was that over in um, Dumaguete? Yeah, I think so. Because a few places have, they like advertise Australian meat and uh, Brazilian meat and that, you know, yeah. beef over there. Yeah. And, and they were good cats, I, I enjoyed those. So, um, you retired? Yes, out of it, finished, gone, free, so running away. The second you retired, was it on your mind to start travelling or did you have a few quiet years over there in Australia? I sort of started travelling, you know, I rarely travelled really, I did in Australia of course, but while I was working, you know, I wasn't thinking of, you know, running away and, you know, just exploring the world, I was busy working right. and it was a lot of work and I wasn't that keen to travel anywhere, but it, I think it was 2016, I, I just, um, well, it took the year off and went around Australia. Not completely, just up the west coast, and it took nine months sort of off. And were you in like the camper van or something, or were you? Uh, yeah, staying I had the home? rooftop tent, the four-wheel drive. Um, you know, packed up by myself. I had a partner at that stage, but um, she was doing other things, so I just decided to go. That was incredible. Uh, that was one of the best things I've ever done. Yeah. Just away. And yeah. you get to, you know, when you're travelling alone, you get to meet people. Oh, you're by yourself, are you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. you do get to meet people when you're travelling, yeah. And, you know, I enjoyed just rocking up somewhere and meeting people, some weird ones as well. <laughs> but, um, yeah, overall, it was a good trip. That was 2016. And then we went to. My son and I went to Peru in 2000. I think it was the year before, 2015. Right. And my son wanted to try the ayahuasca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is the, the drug from the jungle, yeah. from the Amazon. So we decided to do a trip over there. That was only for a month or something. Yeah, I could have stayed there a year, I reckon. It was, it was that good. What was so good about it? The historical side of it, or well, the lifestyle? Just or? everything seemed to come together. After we took, I think it took 40 hours to get there. 
because the plane was delayed and you know we had dramas we had no hotel when we got there we had no luggage but we just rocked up at the hotel that we were supposed to be out and they said oh no no your booking's gone so that was a bit of a drama but um, from then on I went to my first soccer match I call it soccer because football, yeah, yeah, right. yeah 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 first ever soccer match was a uh, um, Peru versus Paraguay World Cup qualifier. Right. And it was one of the best things I ever did. Really? Just getting there was incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing after another, we went to the, what is their main music centre, which was, um, you know, they had their band going and some girl, some Peruvian girl, asked me to go, of course, so I had to pay for everything, but... <laughs> <laughs> I bet it didn't cost much over there, did it? <laughs> no, yeah. no. But um, at one stage I was really quite happy with the music, and I sort of got up and started clapping, and everyone looked at me, and the guard came over and said, quiet down. Really? Yeah. You're not allowed to clap for music over well, there? you can't get too involved. And, like, oh. and they don't... Oh. It's a bit weird over there. So what happened when they score a goal and that? They don't jump up and they don't jump up. Well, and... they might clap, I think, but you know there was nothing. No chance. Yahooing or ooh. Or... Wow, I yeah. thought they were like. Uh... So that was yeah, another was night. You know, the, 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 one thing after another, it just worked beautifully, and we we were going to Cusca, which is up near Machu Picchu, and we we're going to catch a bus or something. But we decided to ride ride motorbikes. Wow. That is the most unbelievable tour from Lima to Cusca. It ended up taking three days and we nearly ran out of time. But anyway, just that the whole Andes and the, the quality of roads. And on these 1,050cc motorbikes, it was just. Oh, they're big bikes, they're big bikes. Oh, big bikes. And, you know. Um, when I first got on, I thought, I'll never use all this power. But there's some great roads over the top of those mountains. We got up on this plateau, it was about, geez, I think it was 4,200 metres high. Twice as high as our mountains in Australia. And it's just a flat plateau, it goes for about 150 k's. They're not these roads which are really close to the edge, are they, when you when oh, you drive? Some of those oh, too. no, I don't like that. And that's the bad part, because when you get up that high, yeah. you start breathing normally but you're not getting enough oxygen ah. and you you're doing this yeah. on the over the handlebar and, you're like, oh, yeah. oh. and in the end my son he's dropped the bike he just fell asleep he Jesus. was going around the corner this yeah. way yeah. if he'd been going the other way he could have gone off the he, he would have been dead yeah. I was just thinking what a great idea this seems but now I think I'm not doing that after what you said you, no, you, you, you put just, me off it now if you do the breathing yeah. if you really just stop every 20, and that's a hard part, to sort of know when to slow down and just take take some breaths. Because you're breathing normally. But the, all of a sudden, you're, it's just, you're, there's no oxygen and you're, it's, it's dangerous. Yeah, no, sounds it. He's all right, he was all right though, was he? he wasn't yeah, look, it was amazing. I mean, we hadn't seen, we hadn't seen a car, because there's not a lot of traffic up there. And he's dropped it in one of these big culverts. And the whole bike's dropped in and just, it was this deep. So the bike was in this culvert and it didn't really get that damaged. Uh, and he's uh, had a soft fall because the bike's dropped away from him. Because he's, as he woke up, he realized, tried to stand the bike up, but it's, the bike's gone in and he's sort of skipped along the road. He damaged his knee a bit, but he was right, young and fit. <laughs> but yeah. um, all of a sudden, we're, you know, we're in the middle of nowhere and the bike's down there, we, we can't lift it out. Yeah. And this bus of workers just happened to stop, lift the whole bike out, said you're alright, put it in the going, get ready to go. And we were lucky. You yeah. know, we were, I don't know how far from anything, you know, on the top of this mountain, I don't know what would have happened if he'd broken a leg or... So, <laughs> that was a scary side, but... The, the scenic ride was just amazing. So we kept going. What's in a lifetime? You got any plans to go back there? Or? Oh, I want to go back, yeah. Um, it's just, you know, planning it. I, I want to spend time here. Uh, I, I'm, I'm booked.
lived in for six months over there. So, so let's let let let's let's talk about that now then. So, um, you, is this your first time in the Philippines? I got here on the sixth of December. Yeah. Went to Manila. And that was your first time in the Philippines. You've never time. been here before. Never been. So I've what, been to Thailand many times. What, what made you think you're going to go to the Philippines then? What was it? Well, it was all to do with the English. Right. You know, they, they speak English, and if they don't, they know enough to sort of be able to, you know. And so you can sort of sit in the bar and meet a local, which is great, you know. Um, where Thailand is tricky. Yeah. Uh, Vietnam's even harder, I reckon. Yeah. And the culture's sort of a little bit more strict in Vietnam. More conservative. More conservative. Um, Thailand's beautiful, though. I just love. Oh, that's gonna, an amazing place. Yeah. We're going to do some a ride there in May. Mate's coming over from Australia. And... So your plans aren't to stay here permanently at this stage, then? Well, I don't want to go at the moment. Put it that way. But um, you never know what happens. I might be here six months. I might be here six years. I might be here. You know. But that's your, that's your initial plan at the moment, is it? You, you're here for six months, and then you'll see after that. I mean, have you got your yeah. flight booked to go back to us? No, 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 no. I never booked. Never booked a return ticket. <laughs> so you, you you landed in Manila, first mm. time you were. How long were you there for? Oh, I was there for two and a half weeks. Oh, it was way too long. I played golf there though. I, had, I met a nice guy from Korea. We had a good time. <laughs> he was fun. What did you think of Manila overall, apart from the golf? I don't want to go there again. Really didn't like it. Well, it's, I just don't like that traffic and that amount of people. The big cities, as I said before, I'm, I'm not I'm not really into them. Right. Which is how it is, but um, you know, I'd be, what would I go there for? What do I need to go there for? Yeah. You know, it's and even Cebu, you know, that's that's bad enough. So I'll just steer away. I just like the little towns like here. You know, coming here is um, my gosh, should I've had six months there? I have six months here. Well, this <laughs> is the thing. So I mean, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to sick here at the end. So you went to Manila for two and a half weeks. Yeah. Where did you go after that? Uh, Bahol. Oh, you should be in a lot more places than I thought. I didn't realise it's a carry yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, I spent, uh, I didn't spend uh, about a week there. Yeah. What do you think of Bohol? Um, well, I was looking for a decent beach, and that's the same as, uh, there's not that many. Oh, there's some nice ones, but I like one where you can swim, and I found one up, up here today, actually, where just near the cliffs up there where it gets deep. Now, you, now you, 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 you're you upsetting me now, because I'm going to Bowa at the end of the month. And I thought they had the most amazing beaches there if you went well, down to do Palawan. They're like this. Yeah, they're like this. In, the good ones are. Yeah, yeah. But I, I didn't see a lot of them. I didn't have the time. Um, yeah, I, I I just went there as a, a sidekick. Okay, that's interesting. But were you in Palawan, where all the bars and that are on the beaches, or were you further inland? No, I was in the town. Oh, you in Tag... Uh, yeah, what's the name of that town again? Tag Valer one or something. That's it, yeah. Tag Valer one, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, never get the name of the town. Well, um, I, th I think all the good beaches are down in uh, Palawan, aren't they? I mean, that's where people were. Uh, yeah, well, going. that's on that... That's where I saw the nice beaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar to this. Palm tree stuff. And so what's Tag Valer in City like? I enjoyed it there. I, yeah. I liked it. The people... You know, I, I just met some people just walking down the street and chatted with them and, you know, it was just... Really nice. There are a lot of expats there. I didn't meet many. No, I, think you know, I just stayed them. in this hotel um, and just kept moving around, looking, finding, finding the right places. No, I've, just, you know, I've thought about trying to take the line because I like, I like, I like places where there aren't too many tourists. You know, I think mm. Patrick um, will probably have a lot. But I had a feeling take the would probably be a bit more like a, a locals kind of place. Yeah. Um, so where'd you go after that then? I came to Dumaguete. Dumaguete. And how long have you been in Dumaguete for? Um, well, when did I get... Was it New Zealand I got there? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That was a problem too. But, um, oh, I had a bung eye. <laughs> I carry this this soap with me. Yeah. You know, it's not the shit soap they use here. Because I'm sort of into the um, more natural stuff. Okay. No anyway, problem. I'm trying to close it and I've squirted it straight in my eye. Oh no! It was the worst thing to do on New Year's Eve, I can tell you. It was three days. It was painful, really painful. Wow. I don't know what caught, you know. Do you have to go to doctors or anything, or you just. Well, I was going to, I was out. going to, but I just kept washing it out and, and it got some drops. And, right. But New Year's Eve was a disaster, and then, uh, you know, a couple of days later, I ended up going up to Cebu. Um, 
flew up there. That was, that was a nice flight. When you rock up and you're supposed to fly out at 7 p.m. and they say, oh no, we've changed that to 11. Oh, was that from uh, Sibylan Airport, was it? Yes, yeah. yeah. Just a quick flight. And I thought, oh, that's easy. It's about 45 minutes, isn't it? If that. If that, right. Yeah. Um, so I bought a motorbike up there. So that I got the wheels and went over the west coast and Cebu and down there and Buffalo, is it? No, did, not. Did you go to Mobile? Mobile, yeah, that's it. Fantastic spot. Are you serious? I like it there. Oh, well, I just did a vlog uh, on the last road. We went to Cebu, we went to Mobile, went to Oslo. I hated it. I did not like Mobile. Why? I, really? I really didn't like Oslo. Um, Oslo? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm on the other side. No, no, we went to Mobile for two days. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then we went down to Oslo. And, you didn't it, stay. and it was that good that we um, knocked back a day early and went back to Dubaghetti. <laughs> oh. But uh, no, I didn't like Mulbo. It was To me, it was uh, too touristy. It was like, you know, oh, it, it could too, be Iron Apple yeah. or somewhere like that. You know, I, it, it, could, it could have been any place. It didn't feel like the Philippines to me. It just felt like a, a yeah, tourist no, town, like, you know. I liked the, the party set up there. It was good. Oh, it was nice, see. you know, good place. But no, I wouldn't want to live there. No. But you go there for a bit of fun. So what's your thoughts on Doomy getting there? Uh, I'm still working it out. Like, um, I think it's a good spot. Uh, you know, the beaches are a problem. Yeah, they're not great. No. Uh, and if you do, down at Darwin or whatever it is, it's... Um, Darwin and Bacong. Rocky and... Yeah. But at least you can have a swim, it's steep. Yeah. You can go... You know, here you've got to walk out how far, it would. Yeah. <laughs> or you're swimming in two foot of water or less. At high tide, it might be two foot deep. Well, at high tide, the water comes in over here. I mean, yeah. it's like it, it, it's right up to the, the thing, so it must be deep by then. But that's, that seems to be like one, two in the morning, because we've gone out a few times well, had a swim at night, like you know, uh, we had a few drinks. <laughs> but um, but it's the, probably that not changes sensible. all the time, though. Yeah, yeah. The tide's <laughs> never the same. No, no, it's just to say the two times it's been really high and oh. I've gone swimming, it's been about one, two in the morning. Like, I couldn't tell you what times they are every uh, day, but uh, yeah. when well, it gets really high, the bar stuff will come in. Now. Yeah. So I'll have a swim later. But I've got a massage booked four o'clock, so that'll be nice. You're living the life, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> right then, so let's get to Sikio. What are your thoughts on Sikio? Mm. Well, I've done the couple of waterfalls, a couple of waterfalls, uh, I've done um, the mountain this morning, which wasn't the best view because of the clouds, but um, but I like this sort of set up here, like Same the rum bar here is yeah. really good, I've spent a lot of time in here. No, the rum bar is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It's a shame because you came on Sunday night, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, because you think the nightlife is good in uh, Mulbulb. You come here on a Friday, Saturday. Oh, right. This place really, uh, we've got JJ's, but you've got a few. I might few not bars be able to keep up with all that though. That's, that's the younger ones, isn't it? No, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? No, there's, uh, there's, uh, well, that guy last night I was with, Volt, uh, Robert, he's, yeah. he's down there every uh, every weekend, mate. And I don't know, I think he's, he's in his 70s, mate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, you, you, you have to come back and try it, mate. If you like, if you like yeah, the night no, I'm life, because coming it's, back. you've come at a quiet time. Quiet so, now. Yeah, in terms of the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, oh, okay. you know, it's yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. it's not the time of it. Because yeah. there's not much else on the island in terms of nightlife. Yep. So come the weekends on the Friday, and all the Filipinos come down from Sikio and Lavina uh, and all that, and they hit yeah. the place and that. So I think it was 4,000 on the beach uh, on Friday night. Like, it That's was, incredible. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it is incredible. It's it is incredible. JJ's. I still JJ's, JJ's, JJ's yeah. Backpackers. Well, it's just a backpackers resort, but it's on the beach. But yeah. on a um, on the, the, the weekend, they charge a 20 pesos entrance fee. There's live music, everyone hits the beach. You get the old rum towers for 400 pesos, mate. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, it's uh, you it, have it, to drink it, rum, do you? No, 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 you get what you want, but like, it's, um, hmm. it, it adds to the party. So, um, which place are you the most impressed with then so far? If, if you had to live here and you had oh, to pick here. a spot so far, it's sick of yours, is it? Yeah, I'd say this is the nicest place I've, I've been to. Oh. Um, look, I haven't been to many, though. Yeah. You know, I haven't been to the glamorous you know, postcard places, but I'll get there, you know, and that'll be a week or so, but... You're not going to get a better pa uh, postcard than Panama Beach, mate. It's the most amazing beach I've ever been on. Oh. But 
as I was saying last night, it's just not very big. It's like 800 metres, yeah. then there's some rocks, and you've got another one on the other side. It's about 400 metres. Yeah. But those 800 metres you've got, it's an amazing bench. You, you, you should really, you've got to check it out. Bro, I've got to go there. Take How a down there? It's about two kilometres. Oh. It's, uh, I think it's 20 pesos. That way. No, it's 20 pesos to get in. Um, but you go down, and uh, it's really worth checking out, mate. It's a lovely right. bench. Um, I have to do that. So, uh, you're thinking is at the moment you're not sure, but you might stay in the Philippines, you might go back and then oh, come back again. Uh, you know, I don't want to go home to the cold. Mm. Now, all right, it's warm there now in Australia, but I'd prefer to have a spot where it's warm all year round. All right, it gets wet. There might be some opportunity to go somewhere else then, but um, Australia's cold when it gets wet here, so I don't want to go back to Australia then. So I'll just see, you know, I, I don't I have, don't have a plan. It's no, just no. A, it'll fall, unfold in front of me. And That's a very good way of looking at things. It's a yeah. very good way of looking at things. Well, so it's happened a lot in my life so far, so I'll just keep it happening. It's amazing how many expats you meet in Dumaguete who have just sold everything and then come and you think, yeah. and they just plan their own life out and they've never been before. And it's a strange way to put all your eggs in one yeah, basket no, and then come I'm, over there like that. I'm You've a, got to sold check any. places like that. Just blowing the dough. Um, so where are you off to next? Back to Dumaguete. Mm -hmm. And then what's that island out down there? Um, Apollo. Apollo, um, is it? Yeah. So I've, I've got the pronunciation wrong, but I know what you yeah, mean. Oh, I'm terrible at it, but um, wherever it is over there, I'll go there. It's a nice town there, they say. There's is there a nice town there, is there? I didn't know yeah. there was a town. Because there's no oh, ferries that go there, is there? You've got, to get, you've got to go over on like a little boat from one of the hotels or something, haven't you? I oh, know, but this is the bigger island. Okay. The big island down there. All right. You know, south. I don't anyway. know. No, it's embarrassing. I don't really know. And I'm not going to try and make a guess because they'll be on me in the comments. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> do you mean that Bokolod way? No, I don't know the names. That's the problem. I've just looked at them on the map and I've sort of done a bit of YouTubing and had a look at who went there and what they did there and find out that it seemed like a pretty good place. Hello, hello. No. No, okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's I'm a three-worded name. I can't think of the name, but okay. Well, like, if we can no. think of it afterwards, I might put it in the description. I'll ask I one, of the, one of the Filipinos just, here the about it out. afterwards. <laughs> um, well, great, mate. Really appreciate you sitting down with us, Tony. Um, no problem. It's uh, been a real pleasure to get to know you. Right. And um, uh, I'll have to have a look at your uh, YouTube now. I hope you do, you'll be the one. Yeah. What is it again, the name? <laughs> speaking of Asia, mate. Speak, speaking, speaking of, of Asia. Asia. Don't worry, right. I'll, uh, I'll be writing it down for you. I need, <laughs> I need the subscribers. <laughs> so anyway, best of luck with whatever you do, mate. And I say I uh, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, good luck with the rest of your travels. Thanks, mate. Well, um, I'm trying to speed up now because I keep putting music on in the background and uh, I don't want to get a copyright strike. Oh, God. So yeah. um, uh, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Um, if you haven't subscribed, why the hell not? And uh, whatever you're doing out there, stay safe, be lucky. <laughs>